So, today I will discuss uh, about the determination of moment of inertia of a fly wheel. So, uh, moment of inertia you know this uh, what is the significance of moment of inertia and how to calculate moment of inertia of, of uh, a regular shape uh, body. So, moment of inertia and its physical significance uh, you know in linear motion a body of mass m moves that is basically a translational motion with displacement x due to force f acting on it. So, equation of motion is f equal to m a where a is the acceleration and a equal to the differential form d 2 x by d t square. Right. So, so, frequently we use we write equation of motion is basically m d 2 x by d t square equal to that force applied on the body. So, now in circular motion in circular motion a body the same body of mass m rotates that is rotational motion with angular displacement theta due to torque. So, here linear motion and in this case circular motion of a body of mass m of a body of mass m. Okay. So, the here displacement this linear displacement okay. So, this we present with x uh, and in this case angular displacement. So, in case of angular motion or circular motion, so that is theta. So, due to torque in this case it is force due to force and in this case due to torque okay. and relation between force and torque is basically tau torque tau equal to uh, f cross r. So, this torque acting on this body. So, in this case equation of motion this similar equation of motion f equal to m a here equation of motion is tau equal to i alpha tau is torque i is moment of inertia of the body and alpha is the acceleration angular acceleration. So, that is the ch basically change of uh, rate of change of angular uh, velocity. So, for an angular velocity is again rate of change of angle okay, with time. So, if you compare these two equation f equal to m a and tau equal to i alpha. So, here a is acceleration here also alpha is acceleration here f is force here equivalent to force is this tau. Now, then you can see this m is equivalent to i mass m is equivalent to i. So, whatever the function of mass in case of linear motion in case of translation motion this in case of circular motion rotational motion this i plays role in same way as mass plays role in case of this motion. So, uh, whatever m in translation motion the same uh, uh, same function uh, or equivalent function does by this moment of inertia. So, <coughs> you know the definition of moment of inertia is basically uh, mass into distance square. So, rotational motion means 
something rotate with respect to a center or with respect to an axis. So, here just you see this mass m is rotating in a circular path uh, about an axis which is perpendicular to the plane of this of this circle and passing through the center. If so, then it is a uh, uh, so moment of inertia i will be uh, basically mass into distance square if it is single mass and its distance is all the time it is uh, remains constant r. So, then it is just m r square if you have different mass a system of uh, masses uh, having a different distance having different masses then uh, actually moment of inertia of the systems of these masses will be i equal to uh, summation over m i r i square. Okay. So, basically uh, the definition of moment of inertia is i equal to summation over m i r i square. So, this summation over this i, uh, i is for different uh, masses. So, uh, just simple example. So, in 11 class, we have uh, calculated moment of inertia of different regular bodies. So, uh, generally we prefer to use the integration method. So, if, if something this mass is distributed uh, continuously okay, or distance is distributed continuously. So, then this summation we we uh, replaced with the uh, integration. So, in case of continuous distribution of mass or continuous distribution of uh, distance, then uh, we use integration instead of summation, but in case of discrete uh, system of masses in that case, so we use the summation right. So, depending on the on the system one has to uh, decide whether uh, summation is uh, ok or, or one can use integration method. Integration method is very uh, convenient way to find out the moment of inertia. So, but every time this uh, it it is uh, it uh, we calculate using this basic definition of moment of inertia. So, that is moment of inertia equal to mass into square of the perpendicular distance of the mass from the axis of rotation. Okay. So, so uh, let us see some calculation simple calculation. So, if you have a thin uniform ring about uh, and about an axis which is perpendicular. So, this is the symbol of perpendicular. Uh, this axis is perpendicular to the plane of the ring to the plane of the ring and passing through the center of the of the ring. Okay. So, basically if a ring of wire a ring of wire. So, that is thin uniform uh, uh, ring thin uniform wire. Uh, is used to make this ring. So, this ring has a mass and this ring uh, this mass is distributed over the ring and all if we just represented by this point. Okay. So, uh, as if this point masses are arranged on this ring. So, then uh, all masses are in equal distance. So, when uh, this ring will rotate about this axis, ring will rotate about this axis, okay. ring will rotate about this axis. So, this whole mass of the ring all the time it will uh, its distance is r. So, directly one can tell if mass of the ring is m then uh, its moment of inertia will be with respect to this axis, because with respect to this axis perpendicular distance of 
all masses uh, 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 is is r. So one can tell this moment of inertia is m r square. M is the mass of the m r square. M is the mass of the ring. But you can calculate following this from the basic uh, definition of the moment of inertia. So, say we have to consider that mass of mass per unit length of the ring is say rho, mass per unit length of the ring is O. So, this what is the length of this ring 2 pi r. So, mass of this ring will be 2 pi r rho, 2 pi r rho mass of the ring right. Now, to calculate it just let us take a uh, small length. So, if it is r then uh, if uh, if just uh, uh, if you take some some angle this d theta small angle. So, from here just it is a small angle uh, change is d theta. So, then this arc will be r d theta. Okay. So, now this is the so uh, you know this for, for unit length this mass is rho. So, if I multiply this uh, rho with this one, so that will be the mass of this this small portion arc okay, which makes angle d theta. So, this is the mass then r square. So, distance is r. So, r square. So, this will be moment of inertia with respect to this axis of this uh, mass. Okay. So, uh, now uh, over the d theta over the theta you can you can you can. So, this uh, whatever this angle we have taken d theta. Now, if you just take integration over the 2 phi. So, 0 to 2 phi 0 to 2 phi then it will cover the whole mass of the ring and this distance all all the time it is r. So, r is constant basically. So, this uh, uh, so this integration will give you moment of inertia. So, integration uh, easily if you can do so this will be r and this r square. So, it is r cube it is constant and only we have to integrate over the theta. So, this will give 2 phi 2 phi r uh, rho is there. So, r cube r I have put here and this r square r r square r cube. So, this is the basically as I told this is the mass of the ring. So, this I can write m r square. Okay. So, this just simple calculation, but all body having regular shape one can find calculate the moment of inertia just this is the method way one has to do. So, similarly hollow cylinder hollow cylinder about this axis. Okay. So, you can think this uh, um, this uh, basically uh, there are many many thin uniform ring. So, you can you can uh, uh, you can take uh, divided this this hollow cylinder into many number of many number of uh, rings and for each ring you know this this each ring this moment of inertia m r m r square right. Uh, so, uh, so in this case also so for each ring so ring 1 2 3 4 5 100 whatever. So, for each ring so mass if it is m 1 m 2 m 3 m 4 m 5. So, m 1 r square m 2 r square m 3 r square m 4 r square if you take summation. Okay. So, then basically m 1 plus m 2 plus m 3 etcetera into r square. Okay. So, that is the uh, m 1 m 2 plus m 1 plus m 1 m 2 plus m 3 this is nothing but uh, is the uh, total mass of this of this hollow cylinder. So, one can uh, find out the moment of inertia just uh, using this knowledge or directly also you can find out okay, calculating like this. So, similarly for uniform circular disc is the solid circular disc. So, this is the example where r uh, is changing. So, you have a circular disc you have a circular disc okay, of radius r 
Now to calculate it, so it is a we want to calculate moment of inertia about this axis about this axis uh, which is perpendicular to the plane of the of the of the circular disc and passing through the center. Okay. So, now you take concentric two circle okay, at distance x and x plus d x. So, so this I have uh, uh, drawn here in a large a large form. So, this x and x plus d x. So, that is the uh, two concentric circle. So, there uh, this uh, this circle uh, inner circle and outer circle this width is basically d x. Now, here again if you consider that here you consider this uh, this uh, now this circle if it is very thin it is a like uh, like uniform ring type of things uniform uh, ring kind of things. So, this distance is we can consider that uh, uh, this uh, the distance is x. So, for any any point on this on this on this ring okay, uh, this uh, distance is x. Now, is mass this ring mass will be uh, what is the area area of this one this is basically 2 pi x 2 pi x into d x that will be the area of this one uh, into this sigma sigma is basically I have taken mass per unit area of the uh, discs. So, this will be the mass of this of this of this uh, ring okay. and uh, distance is x. So, a mass into x square distance square. So, that is the definition of moment of inertia. Now, I can integrate over 0 to r. Okay, over the whole ring, uh, whole disc, I can integrate from 0 to uh, r. So, x will vary from 0 to r. So, if you integrate, so that will be the moment of inertia of the disc. So, if you integrate, so basically integration over the x, so x, x square, so x s cube. So, it will be x to the power 4 by 4. So, now here you put limit r, so r to the power 4 by 4. So, this basically uh, area total mass of the this disc will be total area is pi r square into the sigma mass per unit uh, area. So, pi r square sigma this is the mass of the ring into uh, so r to the 4 r square here. So, uh, r square here and then this 2 and here 4. So, basically half. So, half mass r square. So, half m r square. So, that is the moment of inertia of this disc uh, about the axis passing through the uh, center of the ring uh, and it is a perpendicular to the plane of this thing. Okay. So, uh, so, moment of inertia of this disc about different axis of rotation you can find out if axis is in on the plane of the of the disc. So, what will be the uh, moment of inertia if axis is not passing through this uh, it is not on the on the disc, but it is uh, on the plane of the disc, but it is uh, it has some distance uh, from the center of the disc or it is passing through the disc and it is perpendicular, uh, it is perpendicular, but it is not passing through the center, it is passing through the another point. Okay. So, there are uh, theorem you know, so I will not discuss uh, them. So, this just, just from 11 class you know uh, this uh, how to calculate moment of inertia of different regular body. So, just I remind you uh, so that uh, I can now come to my uh, experiment. Uh, what I want to do? I want to find out the moment of inertia, moment of inertia of a uh, flywheel. I want to find out the moment of inertia of a flywheel. Now, this is a flywheel basically is a wheel, there is a wheel, it is a 
uh, wheel with axle wheel with axle. So, and it is uh, uh, this whole things rotate this whole things rotate ok. It is the you can see rickshaw or cycle ok cycle have this uh, ring uh, with some uh, axle ok. So, and this when you move so this whole things uh, it is uh, rotate ok. So, this uh, this we tell this fly wheel it is it is rotate ok uh, with axle. Now, uh, this axle is in bearing support basically this axle are in bearing support this two end there is a bearing support. So, uh, to to make this uh, friction uh, less. So, we use uh, ball bearing arrangement. Uh, so, this uh, so this this the fly wheel wheel with axle this is the fly wheel we want to determine the moment of inertia of this fly wheel ok. So, theoretically direct theoretical calculation may be difficult to find out the moment of inertia, but experimentally it is very easy to determine moment of inertia. So, basically uh, here I will discuss how to find out the moment of inertia uh, of this kind of fly wheel ok. So, so this uh, so this wheel basically fly wheel it is uh, uh, its axis of rotation is this this dotted red line whatever and this is uh, heavy. So, and its center of mass of this wheel with axle is is basically on the uh, uh, if it is on the axis if it is on the axis ok. So, then uh, this wheel it is not on the floor it just uh, we we keep uh, at a uh, at a height from the floor we keep at a height from the floor ok. This uh, uh, and this wheel it is a uh, it is supported with ball bearing arrangement and this will not this will not uh, rotate if its center of mass is exactly uh, coinciding with the axis of rotation then uh, you can keep wheel at any position you can keep wheel at any position if center of mass is not coinciding with this uh, uh, is not passing uh, center of gravity is not passing through this uh, axis of rotation axis of rotation. So, then uh, you kinna, cannot keep it uh, keep it at any position. So, automatically it will just uh, try to rotate. So, uh, for experimental arrangement we have to we have to arrange perfectly. So, that it is axis of rotation uh, and the and the uh, center of mass of this of this uh, wheel fly wheel uh, will uh, will coincide we will coincide in the sense it is not will be in this direction. So, if it is center of uh, gravity center of mass is uh, uh, if you if we are taking it uh, just up uh, uh, from the floor. So, center of mass center of gravity it should pass through the it should pass pass through the axis of rotation. So, it should pass through the axis of rotation. So, uh, so it will not rotate you just keep in one position ok, but if you just slightly rotate it. So, it will try to it will continue to rotation. Uh, so, here we have made one arrangement. So, one mass we have taken mass m uh, and this uh, this mass is tied up with the with the thread ok and this mass is hanged this mass is hanged uh, with thread hanged with thread from this axle ok. So, here just we have taken the length of this thread in such a way. So, this from floor this length of 
from the floor the length of this uh, uh, this height of this axle is say uh, whatever the height. So, this thread length is is more or less equal to this height okay. and uh, here just we have uh, we have uh, uh, this thread is uh, taken is uh, turned on the uh, on the axle. So, this I have I have shown here it is uh, ok. Uh, so, it is the uh, it is basically uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this thread whatever the length that is we have taken it is uh, just turn on this on this axle and how many turn is taken that one can one can count. So, say in one number of turns of thread is uh, taken on this axle and at that time this height of this mass is h. Okay. So, now uh, if you just uh, uh, if you if you just uh, uh, rotate or if you just now you see now uh, this mass is attached with this with this axis uh, with this uh, flywheel and it is so now overall this center of uh, of mass or center of gravity will not pass through this uh, through this uh, uh, this axis of rotation so if you just leave this mass then this wheel will start to rotate and uh, mass will come down it will be it will rotate because mass if it is in this side. So, center of uh, mass will be shifted in this side of this axis of rotation. So, due to this center of gravity center of mass uh, is now off axis and because of that uh, it will it will start to rotate in this direction and this it will be then uh, unturned you know. So, uh, and then mass will come down mass will come down and this uh, number of uh, turns will decrease and then finally, uh, before just touching this floor uh, this here uh, this arrangement has made in such a way just we have uh, uh, when this all will be unturned, so this thread will be detached from this wheel. Okay. So, that means just from the, so this mass will uh, move this height, height h and when it will just touch the floor. So, then there is no connection uh, with this mass. So, now wheel uh, is free to, uh, is free to uh, is free from this mass and uh, actually what will happen. So, wheel when you will leave this mass just and it is in a position figure uh, uh, at static position when you will leave it. So, wheel will start to rotate. So, when it is touching the floor just that time. So, what is the what is the angular velocity of this wheel. So, angular velocity of the wheel will be maximum say it is omega and this simultaneously there will be this this was also at rest okay, at height h it was rest. Now, this will have also velocity v. So, it is uh, it is uh, it is this velocity is is related with this uh, angular velocity of this of this wheel. So, if this flywheel this axle radius is r then v this v will be omega r omega r and at this position uh, what is the what is the potential energy of this uh, of this uh, mass the it is at height h. So, potential energy m g h. So, uh, at the at the at the at the starting point so only this is the energy potential energy now when you release then uh, its potential energy decreased because height is decreased and then this uh, uh, mass as well as this wheel both are having the kinetic energy so basically this is a very good example of that conversion of energy from potential energy to kinetic energy so that is what uh, happening. So, from conservation of uh, 
energy one can one can write that one can write that this uh, one can write that this potential energy m g h equal to half kinetic energy of this mass m which is coming down. So, half m v square plus kinetic energy of the of the wheel. So, that is half uh, i omega square ok i is moment of inertia omega is the angular velocity of the wheel uh, fly wheel and plus additional since this wheel is rotating and it is supported uh, with the uh, with the ball bearing arrangement. Okay. So, there will be you cannot make this friction less there will be slight friction and that friction if it is uh, that work done against the friction if it is f that is this f is for per, per unit turn if uh, this work done to uh, for uh, done against the friction when it rotate once when it rotate once. So, per unit turn uh, or per unit rotation if if work done against the friction if that is f. So, as I told this uh, when this uh, m g h will be 0 uh, when this mass will touch the uh, ground and that time. Uh, so, it will uh, how many how many turns this uh, it took the n 1. Okay. So, that is how we are counting from the thread uh, or you can just count before touching the uh, floor uh, how many turns it took this wheel. So, the, if it is this n 1. So, this so this energy will be spent for kinetic energy of the mass, kinetic energy of the wheel and the friction energy uh, n 1 f. Okay. So, this is at the moment of detachment of the mass m after n 1 rotation and then after detachment then wheel is having this omega square uh, omega this angular velocity. So, its kinetic energy is half i omega square and this omega square omega is the maximum velocity at the at, at this at this moment and so now this mass is detached. So, only this wheel is there and it is rotating. Uh, so, its kinetic energy this and after some time it will uh, it will be it will be it will stop okay, be because of the friction. So, after how many turns rotation it will stop. So, if it is n 2 and so energy will be spent work will be done against the friction. So, n 2 f. So, this kinetic energy will be spent for this uh, for overcoming this uh, um, friction. So, another equation you are getting half i omega square equal to n 2 f. Okay. So, from here you can find out f and this f you can replace here f you can replace here. So, uh, so uh, basically uh, then you can write m g h equal to half m v square plus half i omega square plus n 1 by n 2 half i omega square. Okay. And now v equal to omega r as I told is r is radius of axle. So, um, you write v equal to v square equal to omega square r square. Now, if we divide by omega square by 2 then and then uh, you take this this part this other side. So, you will get 2 m g h by omega square minus m r square equal to i 1 plus n 1 by n 2. So, i equal to here just take we have taken m out m into 2 g h by omega square minus r square divided by 1 plus n 1 uh, by n 2. Okay. And now, here uh, h this is the basically height of the mass initially and omega is the velocity of the wheel maximum velocity of the wheel basically this omega and r is the radius of, of uh, axis uh, axle n 1 and n 2 this is the counting number uh, initially this uh, before touching the um, floor this uh, 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 mass before touching the floor. So, how many turns it took? So, that is n 1 
an end to after detachment uh, before stopping the rotation how many turns is took. Okay. So, uh, now how to find out omega? So, a height I can measure r I can also measure using screw gauge okay. this uh, n 1 n 2 also using the uh, just I can count just seeing the rotation okay. and uh, using the thread uh, turns uh, we can find out n 1 and n 2. Now, omega how to get omega. So, here uh, you see this omega now difficulties is that uh, at the at this moment after just detachment of mass after just detachment of mass. So, that time maximum omega and after some it is to stopped. So, omega then is 0. So, one can take average omega. So, that is a uh, in that case we have to assume that this force of friction is steady the motion of fly wheel is uniformly retarded till it comes to rest from maximum omega. Okay. So, basically angular velocity can be approximated to omega plus 0 by 2 that is uh, is basically omega by 2 and omega by 2 that uh, uh, you see for n 2 number of turns for each turn what is the uh, what is the for each turn what is the angle 2 pi for n 2 number of turns what is the total angle 2 pi n 2 and if I take time if I count just used uh, stopwatch and how much time it took to come to the rest okay, if it is t. So, from here basically so omega by 2 average omega that is omega by 2. So, this 2 pi n 2 by t. So, from here omega equal to 4 pi n 2 by t. Okay. So, just uh, to come to the rest how many turns is took we have to count and uh, we have to take time for that duration using the stopwatch. So, then one can find omega. Okay. So, this is the uh, working formula for our experiment so, i equal to this. So, we have to so here what we have to do we have to measure height is so we will use meter scale. So, height generally it is uh, 50 60 uh, centimeter and we have to measure r. So, we will use slight calipers uh, uh, we have to measure r r of this one okay, this axle. So, we will use slight calipers okay. and then using stopwatch we can count n 1 and n 2 and this uh, for n 2 uh, we can measure the time t. So, then we will get omega. So, uh, this is the working formula for the for the experiment where we want to determine the moment of inertia of a flywheel. Okay. So, based on this working formula, so uh, I will in next class I will demonstrate the experiment and uh, this experiment in our laboratory. So, thank you for your attention.